Psalms 33, verse 18 through 22. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of times it seems like life has twists and turns and we don't like it. It's uncomfortable. And what makes it worse is when our emotions get caught up in it and our feelings get caught up in it. Because we take things personally that aren't even meant. We hear things that people didn't even say. We feel attacked when people are playing with us or just saying something and they didn't mean anything by it. And that's how we get when we feel like we're in a precarious, unstable, questionable situation. So understand that some of what you're going through is also God's way of pointing out what he wants to fix in you. And the other thing you have to think about too is the struggle is preparing you for your next level. Your next level is in the spirit realm, your next level of faith, your next level financially, your next level in the area of maturation. That's your maturing, your growth. So you have to understand that as God builds you up, edifies you, strengthens you on the inner man, strength comes from strain of some sort. Strength comes from resistance. Strength comes from carrying weight. Strength. <laughs> Woo, boy. Yes, 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 yes. Um, listen, before you start to curse your darkness, recognize that just like there are times and seasons in our lives, there are also times of the day and there are hours. There are mornings afternoons, sunrise, sunset, then there's night. Every bit of it is necessary in our lives. There are things that happen in the night that cannot happen in the day. If you look at plant life, certain things are germinated, certain things are nourished throughout the night because of the insects and the creepy crawlies that are busy doing their thing at night under the soil, under the soil where they can't even be seen. Microscopic life forces, life species that are doing things that they can only do in the dark. Well, there are things that are working, principalities, that Satan has acquired, but that God uses for your fortune. Even though it seems like it's working against you, God is pulling it for you. He's allowing it for you. As Marlene and I talked about Joseph, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers from jealousy. There was nothing good met there. There was no good intention. They would have been happy to have him killed. But one brother stood up and said, no, we cannot do that to our brother. 
So they sold them into slavery rather than kill them. And as a result, God used every bit of that, everything that Satan had against him, the false accusations to lengthen his time in prison. Everything that seemed to be, the more he prayed, the worse it got, right? And you would think, wow, why? Why would he have to pay that kind of price? What did he do wrong? He's trying to follow God. He runs away from Potiphar's wife and ends up being put in prison, falsely accused when he was trying to do the right thing. Well, that's not fair, but God has a plan. Out of the fire, this is a song called God Has Another Plan. Out of the fire to the flames of another trial. When you feel like your heart has had all it can take and nothing is there left to break. In the heat of the fire, he will pull you through. When you don't understand it, he is tried and true. No matter the questions, God has an answer for you. So when the rain falls hard and the storm winds come and you feel it will never blow over, troubles under your feet, nothing over your head, and you find yourself running for cover, God has another plan. Now you're starting all over, <laughs> praying that things will get better. You've done all you can do. You've said all you can say. And you're back where you started again. But you will find that in confusion, there's peace at last. You will know that your trial only came to pass. No matter the struggle, God's ways are better than best. So when the rain falls hard and the storm winds come and you feel it will never blow over, troubles under your feet, nothing over your head, and you find yourself running for cover, God's got another plan. <laughs> God's got another plan. So remember in life, when you're being dragged through the night and you can't see your way, you have to know that God loves you too much to leave you. He already promised through his son, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He's not going to forget about you while he's over there having a coffee break, eating donuts. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I forgot all about you. Are you still waiting on me? Oh, man. I made plans. That's not God. God is faithful. He is true. Whatever he says, he will do, baby. And he just said right there, he will deliver your soul from death and keep you alive in famine. The Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Now you may not have all you want and it may not be the way you want, but you got a roof over your head, you got food in your belly, you got clothes on your back. And you got support systems through friends and or family. So before you start getting bitter, depressed, full of anguish, full of anxiety, before you start panicking and whatever you do, do not faint. Ask God to give you all you need to trust him 
when you feel like you are at the end of your rope and there's nothing left, tie a knot in that bad boy and hang on a little bit longer because your redemption draweth nigh. I really hope, I, I see, I've been there, done that, know what it's like to hit the panic button, know what it's like to get frustrated with God because I'm in a hurry and he's not. I'm thinking it's the end of the world and it's not. I'm thinking I might die in this situation and I'm not. And I have no idea what lies ahead of me and I sure don't want to think about what problems could be there. We have a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I was listening to a song the other night. It's an old song. Press the battle on. Mm, mm, mm. No matter what's going on, yeah, life can be a battle. But life has pleasures too, y'all. So don't think life is just going from fire to the frying pan, from the fr frying pan to the furnace, from the furnace to the grave. Trust me. God has very pleasant moments in your life for you. He has beautiful surprises. He has all kind of good things. But we, unfortunately, have to live our lives not only in the sunlight, that's the good, not only in the breeze, not only on the beach, enjoying the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, but night must always come. That's God's schedule. We cannot live a life without seeing night unless we die before we're born, stillborn. And as long as you can breathe in and breathe out, you will see the night of, of day. Not just the light of day, you will see the dark night of day. And many are afraid in the dark. But God is your daylight in your darkness. So you don't depend on the sun, you don't depend on the light, you don't depend on, on all these other things in life and all your crutches and all your pacifiers and all of that. You depend on God. You depend on his faithfulness, on his love for you, on his honesty, his truth. God is able. I sang a song Sunday, like peering through a window blurred with rain. Emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain. We prayed as best we can. Now we must leave it in his hands. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way I pray he would, hmm, I'm confident he is working all together for my good. I will stand behind his word, for he is able. I know it gets hard, and this is the other part of that song. This is the hard part. Questions. They seem to haunt us night and day. How can God allow my heart to be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Is he even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able, and if he chooses not to move in the way you pray he would, you be confident he's working all together for your good. You must stand behind his word, for he is able. He is able. Oh yeah, he's able. Be encouraged. 
Jesus is alive and well, baby. He is not in the tomb. Your Father, which art in heaven, will give you this day your daily bread and will forgive you all your trespasses. And he will lead you not into temptation, but deliver you from all unrighteousness. Mm. Bless, Father. I pray that you bless everyone hearing my voice, that you would make their cup run over. Make their cup run over, which means satisfy them. Satisfy them emotionally. Satisfy them physically. Satisfy them in, in the areas of their appetite. Satisfy their needs. Satisfy them. Help them, Father. Come to their rescue. Let them see your hand in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. There's a, another little song. He will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He is never weary. And he will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He is never weary. And he will not let you fall. God bless you. Stay encouraged. And know that God is for you. He is a very present help in trouble. Therefore, you will not fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, repeat what you just said. Um, I said there was two things that came to my mind when you were talking about like when we're going through the night and when we're going through those like difficult times in our life and like the different difficult seasons was the first thing that came to my mind was um, count your blessings and focus on all that the Lord has already done for you and yes. focus on all the blessings that you have because then you will be able to praise the Lord through the difficult situations just yes. like you can learn from the mistakes of the, the exodus whenever God's people want, they were too busy looking at their situation they were in that they lost sight of what the Lord had already brought them through to easily remember that he can easily deliver them out of what they were going through. Mm -hmm. so if you keep in sight what the Lord has already done for you, keep in, into remembrance all the things that you have to be thankful for, because when you're focused on those, those things that are above and those positive things, it will help us to increase our faith and to keep our trust in the Lord. And even though we don't feel like praising the Lord, that weapon of praise is going to help us. It will help our spirit as well when we praise the Lord through those challenging times. Mm -hmm. exactly. and it's, a weapon, it's a weapon against the enemy. Mm -hmm. And the other, thing, the other thing that came to my mind, um, it was like, the phrase, like some of those things that you're upset about losing, like some of those things that you've been, that have been stripped away from you should have never been in your hand. Woo! I'm sorry. That was so profound what you just said. Go on. Some of those things that have been stripped away from you should have never been in your hand and they should have never been picked up. And that doesn't mean that it had to be bad. But those were not the blessings. Those blessings weren't for you. They weren't from the Lord because his blessings are greater. And so sometimes when those things get taken away and so that our hands are open, prepared and ready for what the Lord is going to give us, which is much greater than the okay. blessings we think. And then kind of like, it's kind of like now that I'm thinking about it, like sometimes we want to hold on to this that we have, but what the Lord has for us is greater. And if our hands are too busy, occupied with things that we don't need, then they're going to be too busy to pick up the things that God wants us to. So sometimes when we get those things stripped away from us, he's not stripping them to hurt us and to take from us, but so that he can prepare us to receive the greater blessing. Girl, thank you.